everyone, welcome back to Touch Fire Twice. I'm Joshua, and I'm here today to do an in-depth sniff and comparison review of the recently relaunched Wild Hydrangea candle from Homeworks by Slacken & Co. This is their 18 ounce four wick candle. But before we get into that, if you are new to Touch Fire Twice, welcome. My mission here is to share my love and passion for fine home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding, ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create. If you wanna learn more about what I do, why I do it, how I do it, you can check out my website at touchfiretwice.com. But for now, let's dig into Wild Hydrangea. So I was excited to see this one come back. This launched with a couple of other scents on QVC in late January, 2023. Wild Hydrangea is a returning scent, I'll call it a returning favorite from the 2018 spring collection where there were many florals that many of which have not come back. There were climbing clematis and summer zinnias, vanilla cherry blossom, which came back alongside this, which is great to see. Wisteria vines, just a really nice mix of florals, many of which are the Harry Slatkin classic floral with fruit blends, though not all of them. When it was out in 2018, I was a big fan of it. It looked a bit different, actually had a white hydrangea wraparound label versus now this kind of pink, maroon, lilac -y lavender blend here, just a bit more of a pop to it, but I really, I, I did like that, the clean, fresh white hydrangea, which actually in my mind matches the fragrance a bit more than this sweet and romantic looking pink and purples. But I was a big fan of the fragrance back then, so I was excited to see it return to QVC this year alongside Vanilla Cherry Blossom, which hadn't been out for a couple of years. And then of course, there's the Valencia Orange fragrance and the definitely new Iced Coconut Chai. Didn't purchase any of the other ones, just this one. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, you may have noticed that I haven't done a ton of homeworks reviews lately, primarily because unless I've been able to purchase them in store, get my nose on them to understand what the strength is like, or I've heard any positive changes about the performance, I've been a bit apprehensive of purchasing from homeworks.shop. I know there are a lot of fulfillment issues during the holidays. I think my last homeworks.shop purchase was probably in late September, early October, some of which I detailed in my homeworks questions and concerns video. And so I haven't purchased much, frankly, since then, so I wanted to see where the brand was going, what changes, if any, they were going to make to the quality issues that many of us have seen from both the fragrance, composition, strength, and performance when it comes to the wax and the wick, because obviously the fragrance is what brings us to a candle to a brand, but we do need it to perform well so we actually can enjoy the experience of the fragrance. And so when I saw the Wild Hydrangea come back, I was excited with QVC. Luckily, they have a fairly forgiving return policy where if you get it and you burn it, you know, obviously not down, but if you burn it and you have some issues with it or other quality concerns, as we've seen with Homeworks, they do have a return policy where you can return it. Whereas if you purchase it from homeworks.shop, it is essentially an all sales final. So I wasn't willing to take that risk there on homeworks.shop with say some of the Valentine's fragrances that launched in January, 2023. But with this one, a returning scent that I love, I really wanted to give it a shot. And I will say right from the jump, I really am enjoying the fragrance. There continue to be performance issues. As this is my traditional in-depth sniff and comparison review, first we'll talk through the notes that were given here, any of the scent stories that the brand creates. I'll get my nose on it, tell you what I sniff, what it makes me feel, the mood, the moment, the memory, the place, the space, the time that it evokes. Then we'll do sort of the learning portion where we dig into the fragrance notes to really talk through what does this note typically express itself like? Is that what I'm getting in here? and what truly is that fragrance and what should we expect to get when that is a note listed in any fragrance, whether it is a perfume or a home fragrance. And then finally, I will do my comparison portion of the review where I have three fragrances here from the past where we'll do a sniff comparison because there is one that is exceedingly close to this fragrance here, which a lot of folks from the Slack & Co era at Bath & Body Works may already know. So digging into the notes, Blue Hydrangea, Hampton's Meadowgrass, Willow, Pearskin, and Musk. And I will say in the original launch of this candle, the fragrance notes were just slightly different where they qualified willow as willow branches and the musk as night musk. So kind of just small nuances, but worth noting as we're digging into the notes. But getting my nose on it, I do have the one that I burned. It is cooling right now. And then of course the one unburned since this was a duo at QVC. Oh boy, I really, really enjoy this. This is your fresh green floral, more like hyacinth and daffodils and lilies, a bit of a creamy waxiness, but sharp, green, metallic, fresh florals. It's not sweet. It's not your rose, peony, heady, warm, sweet floral. It's almost a bit astringent, grassy and dewy, kind of a, a damp, earthy, woody edge. 
I find it refreshing, but not aquatic and not at all fruity. More invigoratingly fresh with green kind of powdery pollen. Really just that sharp first sign of spring. And it is a unique floral in that respect. And I'm a big fan of that. That's something where even February in, you know, mid-Atlantic Northeast when it's still truly winter, I don't feel that this is inappropriate to burn as someone who's somewhat of a seasonal burner for the most part, because this is not April, May, June. It is not intense, bright, sweet florals. It is green, sharp, metallic, not peppery, but still kind of pops on your nose. Intense, cool flowers almost. So what does this mean as far as they give us with the notes? So wild hydrangea, or as they say, blue hydrangea, not all hydrangeas are actually fragrant. Some do have subtle, sweet, nice scents, but many are close to scentless. Why I think they may have used hydrangea both as the name, the visual, and one of the primary notes is more so perhaps about the idea, the concept of hydrangeas. They are kind of your April or Easter floral, though they do grow sometimes healthily into summer months, but they represent gratitude, grace, and beauty. They were actually cultivated originally in Japan, though they're native to the Americas and Japan. And the name hydrangea in Greek roughly translates to water vessel because they are abundantly thirsty. They just soak up all the water you can give them. And as I said, often there's little to no scent on them. If they are fragrance, they may have a light honey or jasmine-like fragrance. Though frankly, I don't get a lot of that necessarily in here. What I think, though not listed, is the primary floral we're getting in this is probably hyacinth. Now, hyacinth is an intense, sharp green floral. It can have some bitter, vegetal, almost aquatic notes, but also sweet, honey, or spicy angles. It's considered intensely green, fresh, damp, green as spring itself, and really capturing spring in a fragrance. And for me, this truly does capture spring, the first signs of spring. Again, the March, just the, the bulbs, just starting to put their shoots out of the ground. Green, fresh, damp. This is what I'm getting with that sharp green, almost metallic, almost bitter note. And so to me, that reads hyacinth. And then Hampton's Meadowgrass, or Meadowgrass, or Grass. Of course, there are a million and one different grasses out there, many with different fragrances. Hard to say exactly what they're going for in this, because it could have been your traditional kind of grass, which is going to bring you a sweet, herbaceous angle, outdoorsy freshness, the, the uplifting scent of fresh cut grass. This does not lean particularly green in that angle, like a, a warm roundness for me that sometimes you get from a true lawn of fresh cut summery grass. It's not so much that. I think it might be more like a sweeter meadow grass sometimes can be a little bit hay-like, can have a bit of a sweet angle to it while still being green and somewhat vegetal. But a grass note will often be evoking sort of that dewy, fresh, clean green fragrance that I do think you are getting in here. And then willow branches. Transparently, I didn't know what a willow branch or willow tree or willow bush or willow flowers smelled like. So I did some research and there are numerous varieties of willow, you know, everyone knows the weeping willow tree. Willow trees to bushes to some flowering trees that do have fragrance, some that don't. I think this is probably just evoking the freshness of the twigs, the branches, a bit of a woody depth to it, almost some tannin. So think of, you know, the tannin on the skin of a grape that's going to be a little bit drying, kind of earthy, but not dirty or musty, but drying to really like the touch in a sense, almost to a powdery angle, but not a sweet, fresh baby powder, but a drying, woody, yet still fresh because it's, you know, a fresh branch, like it's a live branch, maybe that, that green, just additional depth to it is I think what the willow branches are giving us in here. And then pear skin is an interesting one. I'm not surprised that that could be in a fragrance like this, but I am a little surprised they actually share that with us because sometimes they give us three or four notes. They are giving us kind of a, a deep cut in, in here by saying the pear skin. And, you know, when we think of the pear fruit itself, pear, especially in fragrance, is a crisp and clean note. You could almost hear that crunch, feel that crunch. It is subtler and more green than many fruits. Still sweet and fresh, but not your stone fruits and not your sweet apples. The pear skin, I think, is giving us sort of that fresh, clean, again, a bit green and a, and a bit tannic of an angle. So I talked about the potential sort of tan and earthy woodiness that you'd get from the willow branches. But I think that, you know, if you were to eat, bite into a pear, there's a bit of that tan in there. So it's just that drying, not quite astringent, not quite bitter, but in that family, 
feeling more than a flavor or fragrance that the skin of many fruits, including pears and grapes, can provide. And I think that's why the pear skin is specifically used here. Uh, more of that green, drying, sharp, yet a little bit sweet essence. And then finally, musk. They call out specifically night musk. So musk is an entire class of aromatic substances to itself. They are originally glandular secretions from animals, originally the musk deer. But thankfully now, of course, most is synthetic, but there are also botanicals, plants that emit similar fragrances to the musk deer. They are considered to be attractants. They're alluring, hypnotizing. They can be a bit animalic, kind of sweet, powdery, metallic. Typically a musk is going to add a depth to a fragrance and it's going to add a mysterious, sometimes seductive note, which I do think could be in here. It plays well with sort of that powderiness of the skin or powderiness from the floral and just adds a bit more nuance, a bit of sophistication to it, and just a little bit of a sweetness, but not your fruity sweetness, not your candy sweetness, or I think your vanilla sweetness, a little bit of a sharper, more sophisticated sweetness. So all told, a lovely, beautiful, early spring, sharp, green, powdery, invigorating, fresh floral. Now we talk about performance. This is where it goes a little bit off. So with performance, with homework specifically, I'm also talking about the scent formulation itself. So maybe quality and performance is really the, the category I'm talking through here. And that is because there were some fragrances throughout 2022 that were returning fragrances that seem to have either their fragrance notes, profile, quality, or concentration reduced. So specifically, I had concerns and issues with white birch, as well as the holiday spice candles, where they just were not the same year over year. And the mid to late 2022 pours just did not smell like the same intensity, quality, or in some cases, even necessarily all the same notes. That happens with, you know, quality control issues or changes in supply chain, all that sort of thing. Sometimes, you know, fragrance houses need to recreate the blend with some different ingredients. All that to say, the actual fragrance composition in here, to me, smells, I believe, the same as the original 2018 launch. I looked at my collection, I must have fully finished the original candle and disposed of it years ago, so I don't have one to compare to. It's fairly strong. I'd say it is a healthy 6-7 on cold. Now, this type of green, powdery, invigorating spring floral could be stronger. It wouldn't surprise me if this is just a bit weaker than the original launch, but strong enough. Then that brings us to the wick, the wax, the throw, and projection. So this is a decently strong candle when it comes to just the concentration of the oils and the strength of the scent on cold or when it's just sitting here with the lid off. Where I had issues with this was the burn performance, the wick to wax ratio and the actual throw and projection of the fragrance due to the below average burn quality. So I have some footage here. The original burn, I had it going for a solid four plus hours and it even then did not fully pull out. It got to about 95%. The edge is not completely melting. And because of that, the projection, though it is decently strong in the wax, the projection of this fragrance molecules into the air was average to below average, especially due to the intensity of the candle on cold and just of the fragrance notes. It should be a strong performer throughout the home. It really didn't travel too far. I would have to be fairly close to the candle in the room. I had it in my kitchen, which is an open concept, but it was draft free. It was in a tall hurricane, so no issues there as far as drafty or too cold or not protected. So the burn issue is the candles issue, not, not the user's error. And so the projection was borderline on acceptable or unacceptable. It's a strong enough fragrance that a low projection doesn't kill it the way that it would if it was a lower strength fragrance. The strength of the fragrance slightly made up for the weaker projection. Still not great, and still you should not have to burn any candle four or five hours to get a full pool, especially when they say on the bottom of the candle, do not burn candle for more than four hours at a time. I had to burn it for five hours to almost get a full pool and still did not reach a full pool. So that's a production, you know, science-based wick to wax ratio issue. The second burn was a bit worse. I did not trim the wicks at all. Typically, all wicks should be trimmed to a quarter inch to get a 
healthy, clean, consistent burn. This one, I did not trim at all. Typically my homework candles I do. The wicks were fairly short and I didn't want to risk pooling issues. The second burn today took five hours plus, five and a half probably, to mostly pool, but at hour three or so, it was still very much showing hardened wax around the perimeter of the candle. And then finally it got to mostly pulled, but you could see there were kind of cliffs of wax that were hanging around, which you can see here now that it has cooled and hardened. There are these kind of cliffs that these just did not get a full pull to them. And it wasn't just kind of dragging down the sides. It was, it just, the heat of the flame from the wick through the wax just could not reach the edge of the vessel there. So that is a, that is an issue that, you know, for, scientifically they need to correct from the performance of the candle because that is unacceptable. And frankly, that second burn should be better than the first. And because it was not fully pulling out for three, four hours, it makes me kind of on the fence, frankly, whether or not I'm gonna keep these or return them as defective to QVC because if they say do not burn it longer than four hours, but if I follow the instructions on the candle and burn it for less than four hours, it just completely tunnels, then it's not worth any money, even if I love the fragrance. So I'm gonna give it a third burn and see if it pulls out easier then. The other thing that I, I'm sniffing now that I think I'm going to run into with this is when I'm smelling the one that was burned compared to the Unlit Duo, the risk here when you're burning a candle for that long is that you're going to kind of use up the oils before you get through the wax. And that's part of the issue with a under wicked candle like this seems to be is it doesn't burn through the wax at the same rate as it burns through the oils. Just like if you put it under a warmer, the oils will burn out, dissipate, and you'll have a full candle worth of wax. That's sort of what you run into with this when it takes so long to pull to actually get that projection. The wax is still there, but the oils have deteriorated or been completely utilized, at least for that top layer of wax, to where when I sniff this one versus this one, this is severely diminished and muted in fragrance, where this is, you know, strong, fresh candle. Now that's usually going to be somewhat the case. You know, a burnt candle is not going to smell the exact same as a never used unlit candle. This is to the point where it's quite muted and I would imagine unless the performance picks up by the next the third burn it risks becoming just kind of that grody singed off scent where there's too much wax then for the load of oils left in the you know bottom third bottom two thirds of the candle so I'll give it one more burn and then I'll make my call whether or not I'm going to return the duo to QVC because at that point that I would absolutely fairly consider that to be defective. Hope it's not the case. Hopefully that third burn, it rights its wrongs and, and becomes a great thrower because it is a beautiful fragrance. Disappointing that that's not been solved, but the pour date on these is October 8th of 2022, right there, that code. So perhaps the quality concerns that many of us brought to Homework's attention had not been fully addressed in production by October. That's not surprising. Hard to say if they're gonna make corrections, though they have committed, Harry has committed to making corrections, so I do believe in the integrity there that there will be corrections made, but it's hard to see what those corrections will look like because we don't know when those potential corrections were implemented in the formulation at the factory. We won't really know when to expect any potential changes because if that happened in November, December, we won't be seeing those candles until, you know, at least late spring into early summer. Maybe there'll be an indicator that the lids will change, Again, I'm, I'm just not certain if these are the ones we're gonna stick with or not, but I remain hopeful. Now, doing the fun part of the video for me is the In-Depth Sniff comparison review. I have three candles here, all from Bath & Body Works, two of which were candles during the Slacken & Co. golden era at Bath & Body Works. And we'll go through from least like this one to most like this one. So we'll start off with, by name alone, Hydrangea. This was Slacken & Co. Bath & Body Works. This was poured in early 2011. This fragrance literally has not been released under this name or any other name that I'm aware of for 12 years of Bath & Body Works, which is a shame because it is beautiful. Again, a conceptual fragrance because as we've now learned, hydrangeas typically don't have much of a fragrance on their own. So it is conceptual 
bright spring fragrance, a fresh blend of dewy hydrangea leaves, peony petals, and summer apricot with a touch of sheer musk. Now this candle is burned down very low. You can see there are, well, I don't know if you can see, there are like oils that have come to the surface because I've not burned it probably since 2012 or 2013. It's got a little bit of that creaminess from the apricot. It is dewy, it is fresh. It's not as intensely powdery, green, sharp, metallic as the wild hydrangea from Homeworks, which I think is the hyacinth, so not really the hyacinth in here. Again, not sure exactly which floral will be in here since I doubt that it's truly hydrangea, but it is a beautiful, beautiful blend. I would love to see someone somewhere bring it back, but not a match for wild hydrangea. And then moving on to the second comparison candle from Bath & Body Works, the Spring Has Sprung candle. This may have been around a couple of years, perhaps with a couple of different names, not really sure, but this was from early 2022. Notes on this one, Easter lilies, dew-covered grass, and early spring air. It is similar to Wild Hydrangea in the sense that, well, first of all, early spring <laughs> matches sort of the, the, the mindset that Wild Hydrangea puts me in, but it has a similar fresh green powdery floral, not sweet. Though I will say the Spring of Sprung Candle is much more aquatic, that dew covered grass, I suppose, but giving a side-by-side -side sniff here. Yeah, this is actually greener. There's more of a sweetness, uh, maybe from like the grass in the Wild Hydrangea. I'm not sure what else would be giving the sweetness. Perhaps, honestly, the musk could be a little sweet, but they are, there's a, there's a, a lot of similarities to these. They're probably 60-70% the same when it comes to the type of floral. Whatever green, whether it's maybe the grass, they both have grass listed, sure, like the grass note. I think there's probably a bit more of a sophisticated musk angle to the wild hydrangea. Something a little bit more sweet. It's a bit sharper in the spring has sprung. A little bit more of a musky sweetness in the wild hydrangea. And finally, from Bath & Body Works, the Slack & Co. Golden Era 2012 here. This spring candle, spring had been around at least for a couple of years, and it came out every year, and it has returned, I think, a handful of times since the partnership ended, but less and less consistently. Spring was like a dream of walking in a lush garden with tulips in full bloom, sweet apple blossoms, yellow daisies, and daffodils. Most folks, myself included, when they first smelled white hydrangea in 2018 were like, this is spring Slack and Co. from Bath & Body Works era. And it is nearly the same. Not quite a full-on dupe, but you know, like kind of repackaged with a twist. It's a bit of an elevation of spring. Now the notes, quite different, but you can't always trust the notes in the bottom. A lot of these are interchangeable. This is more to evoke, you know, that mood, the moment. This one still smells quite strong for being 11 years old. It's that same green floral, fresh, powdery, sharp, a bit metallic, almost a bit more grassy or dewy perhaps, which is funny because they don't mention dew or greens in here at all. It really is just the idea of the full garden and they mentioned tulips, apple blossoms, yellow daisies and daffodils. Apple blossom typically gives a bit more of a sweetness to me than either of these candles give. But on the side by side, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, they are essentially the same fragrance. A bit of a nuanced elevation, perhaps. I think maybe the tad sweeter and less dewy in Wild Hydrangea versus Spring. But again, you're smelling candles that, or I'm, <laughs> you're, smell, you're smelling nothing, I'm sorry. But hopefully you're getting a sense of it. Uh, I'm smelling candles that are 11 years apart. So even if they were the same fragrance, they would smell different. Very, very, very similar. I was happy to see that. There are a handful of fragrances with Homeworks that are sort of those elevations of past fragrances. You know, there's the Magic Mistletoe, which was a reimagining of Winter Garland. White Birch was very similar to, in my mind, the original Fresh Balsam. Garden Blooms was quite similar to Flower Shop. Wild Hydrangea was similar to Spring. Woodland Cabin, very similar to Winter. And that's not a bad thing. That's not, you know, a, a dupe or biting off to me. It's those were Slacken and Co blends and formulations that are now sometimes still at Bath & but oftentimes not, and kind of reimagined with a twist with uh, the elevation in Homeworks, as long as the performance is there, which in this case, the fragrance is there, the performance is mediocre. So to wrap things up, overall, I will say, if you loved Wild Hydrangea with Homeworks a few years back, you will still love this one. It is the same fragrance, no major changes, 
I'm still a little bit unsure and concerned with the performance uh, of the burn and therefore the projection, but we'll see. I'd love to hear what you think if you purchased this candle or if you purchased any of the other recent Homeworks releases. Would love to hear your thoughts on the fragrance and the performance. And until next time, take care.